Thomas Cranmer studied to become a priest, found himself getting converted at the White Horse Inn Bible Study, appointed by Henry VIII, he was, he was, <laughs> see to it that he could get divorced, you know, the right way. Henry dies, his son Edward is his successor, who appoints Thomas Cranmer to really go about the business of reforming the English church. His contribution, among many others, putting the Book of Common Prayer into the language of the common people. Things are going oh so well. Enter our heroine, the one, the only, Bloody Mary. With Mary coming to the throne, Mary has never forgotten that this man, Thomas Cranmer, is the man who was the architect for my mother's annulment. And she is filled with hatred for Cranmer. On top of that, Cranmer is Protestant. He is Reformed. He is not Catholic. And so, Mary comes after Cranmer. He is the foremost figure of the, of the English Reformation. And she has him arrested, and she has him put on trial for treason against the throne of England. And when examined, Cranmer held his ground firmly before the commissioners, and he was found guilty also of heresy. And so on March 21st, 1556, Cranmer is now brought to the University Church of, of St. Mary. Latimer and Ridley have already been put to death. And before the painful ordeal, he is forced to listen to a sermon on Catholic theology by the provost of Eton on transubstantiation. And at the conclusion of the message, Cranmer was forced to declare his faith in this popish doctrine. He has been required to write a manuscript of his repudiation that, that he would read. And so Cranmer, he weakens. Latimer and Ridley are no longer in a prison cell to encourage him and to hold him up. He, he, he's, he's by himself. He, he is alone. And he has been here longer than the other reformers being imprisoned. And over the duration of this, his faith begins to weaken. And there's application even in this for us that we as believers, we need one another. We need to, to be connected to one another. We desperately need the encouragement of, of other believers to, to keep us strong, and we need the example of their lives, and, and we need to pray with them and, and study the Bible together with them, and it has a, a, a mutual effect by which we minister to one another. So before they burn him at the stake, they said, we want you to make a public statement of your repudiation of the gospel. And we want you to write it out. And we want you to go into St. Mary's Church and stand in the pulpit, and we're going to gather all the dignitaries together. We're going to begin by celebrating Mass. There is going to be the cross bearer come in. There's going to be the official procession. And you're going to stand in the pulpit, and you're going to read your repudiation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we want you to write it out, and we want to read what you're going to say. Cranmer gets into the pulpit. and calls the Pope an Antichrist. <laughs> the Antichrist. And he says, as for the Pope, I refuse him as Christ's enemy and the Antichrist with all his false doctrine. And J.C. Ryle said, never has, have any faces ever been more in shock than they were that day to hear Cranmer's repudiation of his repudiation. He forthrightly rejected the popish doctrine of the real presence 
of, of Jesus over the supposed matter of transfiguration. Cranmer is led to the stake. He is fastened to the stake. The fire is lit. And as the flames curled around him, he held out his right hand into the fire, that very hand with which he first wrote his repudiation of the saving gospel of grace. And he put his hand into the fire in front of the enormous throng of people that were gathered there that day and said, in front of all, this unworthy right hand must be put into the fire first. And with his left hand, he extended upward in heaven, and his dying words were, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit.